Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu. In this video, I'll show you how to stitch together several photos into a panorama using Lightroom's Photo Merge feature, which is new in Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. After I show you how to create panoramas, I'll show you how to find your panorama files, and I'll give you some tips for photographing panoramas successfully. Now Photo Merge will stitch RAW files and JPEGs, as well as TIFFs and PSDs. One thing I love about this feature, however, is that because it works with the raw data, if your source files are raw files, your panorama file will be just as much of a raw file with all of the editing advantages of raw files. This sets Lightroom's Photo Merge feature apart from those of Photoshop, Photomatix, and others. Before we start, notice that the resulting file name is the file name of one of the source files, and then dash pano DNG. Let me go back to grid view with the shortcut G. To get started, I'll select my first photo, then hold the shift key down and click on the last to select them all. The brightest photo in my selection is the active photo. It's the file name of the active one that we see as the beginning of the panorama file. To choose a different active file, click inside its thumbnail not in the gray border. I'll go back to this first one. Now generally my workflow is to create the panorama and then develop the result. However, if you've already done some work, Lightroom will automatically copy some of that work from the active photo to the result. Settings that are copied include basically all the global slider settings. What's not included are local corrections, red eye, spot healing, upright, crop, and lens corrections, with the exception of defringe. With this in mind, it can be more straightforward to do all your work afterwards. But for global settings, it's really fine either way. To launch Photo Merge, you can go to Photo, Photo Merge, and select Panorama, or you can right-click or control-click inside any of the photos, choose Photo Merge, and then Panorama. Finally, you can use the shortcut Control-M. Note that this is Control-M even on Macs. We see it creating the preview here. Now Lightroom has three different methods here of aligning and distorting the photos to seamlessly fit them together. I'll explain them briefly, but really it comes down to whichever result you like best. Let's talk about perspective. If you have a center subject in your scene and the scene is relatively flat like a building, if you take a moment to think of yourself out in the field photographing, as you capture the side frames in your scene, your camera is at an angle to the subject. Perspective corrects the side photos for this perspective issue. It does give you this bow tie effect, however, so more of your panorama has to be cropped off. If you don't have a center subject, or your scene wraps around you or is really wide, cylindrical can be a better option since it doesn't make this perspective correction and you don't have to crop as much. Finally, Spherical maps the photos into a sphere and can be best for 360 degree panoramas. It doesn't make much of a difference in this case. Finally, you can have Lightroom make a choice for you amongst these based on its analysis of your photos. What I would really recommend though is you simply try each one and see which one you like best. Next, you can have Lightroom crop your photo at this point or you can wait until you get into the develop module. If you do auto crop, you can always undo or modify it later in the develop module using the crop tool. Now, if your exposures differed, Lightroom might apply some exposure blending across frames. It will also fix chromatic aberration, which is a lens issue, even if you don't check the box in the lens corrections panel of the develop module, because it's important that that be fixed on the individual frames. For the same reason, it will also apply a lens profile to each of the frames if it can find a profile. These correct for any pin cushion or barrel distortion your lens creates, as well as vignetting or darkening of the corners. In a minute, I'll show you an example of where it can't find a profile. I'll go ahead and complete the merge, and we see up in the status bar that Lightroom is processing this in the background. We can do other work while it continues. You can even build more panoramas, but if you build too many at once, 
It's possible the Lightroom will run out of memory and crash. Here's the result. Notice the file name drawn from the active source file and the dash 2 after Pano because I had already created another one with this set of photos. Now other than the file name of the active source file, Lightroom doesn't document that the panorama came from these six source files. If this is important to you, then I would suggest in the metadata panel documenting the source files in one of the metadata fields. I use copy name. Let's do another panorama so I can show you just a couple more details. This isn't the most attractive scene, but it'll do for my example. First, I'm not sure if these photos are in the correct order. It doesn't matter though, because Lightroom will analyze the photos and place them in the proper order. I'll go ahead and click on the first, and then hold the Shift key down and click on the last to select them all, and then I'll right click and go to Photo Merge Panorama. I wanted to bring this warning message to your attention in case it happens with your photos. With the last set I did, Lightroom found the lens profile for the lens I shot those photos with. In this case, it can't find it. When I see this message, the solution is to cancel and go see if a profile is available. With the photos still selected, I'll go to the Develop module and I'll scroll down to the Lens Corrections panel. Now I want to apply a profile to all of these photos. So I'm going to click this little switch to turn on Auto Sync. That allows me to work on multiple photos at once. Now here in the Profile tab under Lens Corrections, I'll enable Profile Corrections. Sure enough, it doesn't find the profile for this lens. However, I've learned that for this lens, if I give it a hint and just tell it that it's a Canon lens, then it detects the lens and finds the profile. If you can't find a profile for your lens, you'll just run Panorama without it. Note that if you have a compact camera or a mirrorless camera, those profiles are applied automatically behind the scenes, so you shouldn't see any warning messages. Now that I've applied the profile, I'll turn off Auto Sync and I'll build my panorama. From here in the Develop module, I can right-click, choose Photo Merge, Panorama. I'll go ahead and complete the merge, and then I'll go back to the Library module. To create another panorama with the same settings I used on the last one, I can actually bypass the dialog. I'll select a couple photos here and use the shortcut Shift-Control-M. You can see that it's automatically generating the panorama without showing me the dialog. This is called headless mode. Next, let's talk about finding your panorama files. At this point, the only way to identify a panorama file is by the dash pano in the file name. So if you want to be able to find them, it's important that you don't remove that from the file name. To do a search for your panorama files, you would first choose a source where you want to search your entire catalog, a particular folder, or a collection. I'll just search the collection. Next, here in the library filter bar, I'll go to text and I'll search the file name for dash pano. And it finds my two panorama files. To cancel the search, I'll click on the X and then I'll click back on none. Finally, for those new to photographing panoramas, I want to give you a few tips so that yours blend together as well as this one does. It's important for the frames to have overlapping content. I overlap about 25%. In addition, use manual focus rather than autofocus so that what you're focusing on doesn't shift between shots. Similarly, keep your depth of field or aperture constant as well as your exposure if possible. Now, as I mentioned, Lightroom will do some exposure blending across the source files if necessary, but it's always better if it doesn't have to. Shoot in manual exposure mode if you can, or if not, use aperture priority. Finally, if you're shooting JPEG so that your white balance doesn't shift between shots, don't use auto white balance mode. This doesn't matter if you're shooting RAW because white balance isn't baked into your files so Lightroom will apply a consistent white balance in the panorama file. I would encourage you to experiment not only with horizontal panoramas, 
but vertical ones, ones that are both tall and wide, just to give you more pixels if you want to print really big, and of course 360 degree panoramas as well. In the next video, I'll talk about the Photo Merge HDR feature, which allows you to combine multiple exposures. For scenes that have very bright highlights and very dark shadows, you can combine the two features by shooting multiple exposures for each frame in your panorama. In this case, I would recommend doing the HDR merge of the individual source frames before creating your panorama. Finally, I should mention that with Lightroom 6.0, panoramas shot handheld rather than with the tripod sometimes have wavy horizons. Adobe is still working to improve the algorithm, but in the meantime, I would suggest shooting with a tripod if you can. I hope you've enjoyed this video on creating a panorama in Lightroom. I'm Laura Shue.